Thank you for joining us today on Netfile. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. While we produce more food than ever before, one in nine people still go hungry and two billion people don't get enough nutritious food. The carbon footprint of food production is significant. So is the pressure agriculture puts on water resources. Agriculture accounts for 70% of water withdrawals and agriculture is the main driver of biodiversity loss. At the same time, 30% of food produced is wasted or lost after harvest before it even reaches the consumer. Food experts say there is a problem with our food system. Today on the program, we will look at how big this problem is and the solutions as well. So stay with us. In September 2020, a few weeks before harvest, a massive flood wiped out at least 2 million tons of rice farm in Kebe State in northwest Nigeria. At least 450,000 hectares were destroyed in the country's main rice growing state. This was more than 25% of the projected national output of 8 million tons. Farmers in Kano, Niger, Enugu, Jigawa, and Nasarawa also reported damage. These farmers have been counting on the harvest for their annual income and much of their food. With a fertile soil profile, improved cultivation practices, and committed productive farming population, Kebi State has been the focal point for the federal government's Anchor Borrowers Program, an initiative of the Central Bank of Nigeria launched to achieve local production sufficiency in the country. Unfortunately, the 2020s floods diminished the hope of many of the farmers. And to compound the rice production problem in the country, on Saturday, the 20th of November 2020, non-state armed group operatives killed tens of civilian farmers harvesting rice farms in Zabamari community some 15 kilometers outside Meduguri, Boronu State's capital, sparking outrage across the country and internationally. It is very clear to us that the only solution to this crisis is peace. We should always prioritize prevention, prevention in whatever we are doing, development we are feasible, and humanitarian assistance we are needed. Today, rural communities fear for their lives and that of their children. They have not yet gone back to the farms and dread the harvest is entirely lost. Violence and insecurity have pushed 7.4 million people in the central Sahel region of West Africa into acute hunger. The number of internally displaced people has risen from 70,000 two years ago to nearly 1.6 million today including over 288,000 in Mali, more than 265,000 in Niger, and over 1 million in Burkina Faso, which is now home to the world's fastest growing displacement crisis. The most recent official data indicates that 4.3 million people are currently critically food insecure in Bornu, Adamawa, and Yobe states. And the number could reach up to 5.1 million over the lean season between June and August 2021. What do you feed the children? Meanwhile, the result of the food insecurity is resonating beyond Nigeria's northeast. Two year old Emmanuel Sunday Akpan suffers from a severe form of malnutrition. The Cross River State Government, in a bid to address the issue of severe malnutrition in remote communities, launched a nutrition monitoring task force headed by the State Commissioner for Health with the task of monitoring where malnourished children can be identified. So, this child, since I was delivered this baby, there is no. The father left us since uh, two months. After one month plus, so I was suffering with the baby. The baby was not healthy. So after then, so till December, until December, so the baby was sick. Did not eat. So that is where the baby start to lean. So last year was a very very tough year for um, families, and indeed children 
all across the country and I'm sure all across the world. While the concentration remains on COVID-19 and getting people tested and trying to build isolation centers, test molecular labs and the rest of it, um, our children who have been shut down, families who have lost their livelihood and their children um, are being um, on the fed, on cared for, um, are beginning to show very strong signs of malnutrition. Um, we've been going through communities today um, as part of our monthly community assessment, as part of our MSCH week where we go to um, check for children, their nutritional status, and also try to see their immunization card, their ANC cards for pregnant women, and other um, indices. And we have picked up several um, severely malnourished children, um, children who are suffering from marasmus, marasmic koshokor, and several others have been picked up from the community. Uh, most of those kids are both two years old, but they are unable to sit, not to even talk of working or talk, or their cognitive reasoning zero, cognitive development, mental development. Um, it's almost not um, happening uh, because of the severe, severe malnourishment that they do have. So basically, we are beginning to find these children all around, and it's part of the aftermath or part of um, the, the fallout of the COVID-19 on society and, of course, on children in society. Um, for us as a government, we have a lot of work to do to try and cover up and meet up where we used to be. Um, it used to be very difficult to find malnourished children in Cross River State in Calabar. It used to be very difficult to find malnourished children in our villages just because we are close to the River Rhine area. And even though they might not have so much money, even though they might be amongst the very last uh, quartile in society, however, they still had access to their farmlands, they still had access to their petty businesses that could put food on their table and help the nutritional status of their children. But from what you can see now, because all of that was put on a hold because of COVID, um, families are not able to take care of their kids and um, we're having more and more children come down with severe malnutrition in communities. Today, experts say efforts must be made to strengthen food systems. This refers to the constellation of activities involved in producing, processing, transporting, and consuming food. But too many of the world's food systems are fragile, unexamined, and vulnerable to collapse. As millions of people around the globe have experienced firsthand during the COVID-19 crisis, scientists agree that transforming our food systems is among the most powerful ways to change course and make progress towards all 17 sustainable development goals. We need food systems in which healthy foods and nutrition services are affordable and within reach of every child, every young person, and every family, no matter who they are or where they live. Nigeria is one of the most important countries within that equation. It is a country with huge potential and it's a country with a heavy burden. We need to do two things. First of all, unlock that potential so that nutritious foods are available, are affordable, and are in the mouths and stomachs of those children, those young people, and those mothers where it's so uh, essential uh, to be. Secondly, is to address the burden. The burden is staggering. One third, one in three uh, children are potential for stunting. You could see the map there where the burden is at its most acute, uh, but every state um, has a, a burden of one form or another, and 10 out of the 36 plus FCT uh, states um, have an exceptional burden uh, to, to deal with. One in 10 children are wasted. This impact is not only on children and young people, but it's also on adults. 
and has a direct implication to the human capital available to Nigeria. EAT, Food and Land Use Coalition, the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition, World Economic Forum, and World Business Council for Sustainable Development were the five partners that established the Food Systems Dialogues in 2018. Over 40 dialogues have been convened in 23 countries across six continents, engaging over 2,500 food systems practitioners. These dialogues are in preparation for the United Nations Food Systems Summit to be convened by the United Nations Secretary General in September 2021. The, the Food Systems Summit is part of the Decade of Action uh, for Sustainable Development Agenda, and it calls for ambitious actions on how we can accelerate the delivery of SDGs through the Food Summit. Before COVID pandemic, uh, the UN report on sustainable development goals clearly showed that we were off track in, in, in a number of uh, sustainable development goals, and we couldn't reach them by 2030. So including those, of course, that impact on food, there are opposing challenges that are related to food insecurity, to malnutrition, rural poverty, environmental degradation, loss of biodiversity, all these uh, you know, combined. It was clear that how we produce food and bring it to our tables is increasingly unsustainable and we cannot continue as business as usual. That's why uh, the, the, the national dialogues uh, and the summit will be important in setting the agenda for achieving healthier, more sustainable and equitable food systems. The federal government, in collaboration with the United Nations Systems in Nigeria, announced plans to organize a series of dialogues across the country towards ensuring resilient, inclusive, and sustainable food systems in Nigeria by 2030. To ensure an all-inclusive and participatory dialogue, the Nigeria National Food System Dialogue is planned to be organized at three levels in advance of the summit bill to take place in September 2021. This includes inception dialogue, aim at identifying food system that challenges from multiple perspectives. Exploratory dialogue plan to hold in six geopolitical uh, zones and is to announce promising approaches from diverse stakeholders that contribute to food system in Nigeria. And the last is the consolidatory dialogue to exchange views on the pathway towards sustainable national food systems identifying intentions and commitments of different food system actors. The dialogue will focus on the UN five action tracks, namely ensuring access to safe and nutritious food for all, shift to sustainable consumption patterns, boost nature positive production, advance equitable livelihoods, build resilience to vulnerabilities, shocks and stress. The action tracks will draw on the expertise of actors from across the food system. And together they will explore how keep cross-cutting levers of change, such as human rights, finance, innovation, and the empowerment of women and young people can be mobilized. In order to have a seamless food system dialogue, the National Convener, in collaboration with relevant stakeholders, as constituted committees, which include sector experts in government, development partners, and civil society organizations with specific responsibilities. It is envisaged that the National Food System Dialogue also identified practices and policies that will have the greatest impact on the achievement of the desired food future vision within the Nigerian local food system. The dialogue provides opportunity for different stakeholders to work together to devise pathways for the sustainable future of national food system that makes contributions to the SDG. The United Nations encourage countries to have as many dialogues as possible. Thus, the role of independent dialogues in defining sustainable food system in Nigeria cannot be overemphasized. Therefore, I want to use this opportunity to encourage relevant stakeholders in the food system to organize independent dialogue to ensure inclusive participation. Excellency. In 2018, the United Nations Security Council 
passed a historic resolution recognizing that hunger drives forced displacement and conversely, forced displacement can have a devastating impact on agricultural production. It is believed that hunger will never be eliminated without global peace. Climate change further deepens the spiral of hunger and conflict. Today, around 20 million people are facing famine in Yemen, South Sudan, Burkina Faso, and northeastern Nigeria. It is said that conflict is the main driver of hunger in most of the world's food crisis. Conflict breeds hunger. It can displace farmers and destroy agricultural assets and food stocks. Or it can disrupt markets, driving up prices and damaging livelihoods. In this vicious circle, conflict and lack of food break down the very fabric of society and all too often lead to violence. Food System Summit Dialogues are convened by national governments and individuals from across all of society. To create an open and honest space for sharing, dialogues are typically carefully curated and facilitated events. The government and the United Nations body in Nigeria recently hosted the media virtually to explain the visions of the dialogues to the overall success of the United Nations Food Systems Summit. Sustainable food systems do not just help to end hunger. We need to put in place systems to ensure that we produce enough food for the current generation without compromising the ability of future generations to have access to adequate food and proper nutrition. As the population continues to grow and with the many players in the food industry, there is greater need for all of us to understand how we will ensure availability of quality food in quantities that we cater for the needs of all people in a sustainable way. Experts explain that food systems are complex. Small-scale farmers need inputs such as seeds and fertilizer to ensure production, and the training and support to overcome shocks such as unpredictable weather, economic downturns, or health crises. It is also critical to ensure that the markets where their products are bought and sold keep running and to support the crucial role of women in food systems by addressing gender inequalities, which impede their income-generating activities. But there are also a host of social dimensions. Every individual has a role to play in our effort towards sustainable food systems. We are all stakeholders when it comes to food because of one simple reason, we are all at least consumers. The pandemic has powered an unprecedented global appetite for change that must be channeled into transforming food systems to be more inclusive, more equitable, and more sustainable. We must come together as stakeholders to build back better. The success of small-scale farmers also depends on giving a voice to their representatives, organizations of farmers, indigenous peoples, women, water users, and other community-level institutions. It is envisaged that the National Food System Dialogue with adverse contributions towards shaping the pathways that will lead to collective determination of sustainable food systems and how they will contribute to achieving food system in Nigeria. It will also identify practices and policies that will have the greatest impact on the achievement of the desired food future vision within the Nigerian local food system. Also consider how it will, pos uh, it will be possible to assess progress towards improved food system, as well as determine who needs to be involved in achieving the overarching objective of building effective food system in Nigeria. The dialogue provides opportunity for different stakeholders to work together to devise pathways for the sustainable future of national food system that makes contributions to the SDG. The United Nations encourage countries to have as many dialogues as possible. Thus, the role of independent dialogues in defining sustainable food system in Nigeria cannot be overemphasized. Therefore, I want to use this opportunity to encourage relevant stakeholders in the food system to organize independent dialogue to ensure inclusive participation. While many countries mention the agricultural sector in their nationally determined contributions, very few set targets in relation to other stages of the food system, such as food loss and waste reduction, sustainable diet or food consumption, 
Only 11 countries currently mention food loss in the NDCs, and not one country makes reference to food waste. Opportunities to reduce global emissions of the food system sector remain largely untapped due to lack of comprehensive coverage of the opportunities that exist in the food system. On the one hand, and vagueness and unspecificity of NDC targets on the other. Overall, only a handful of NDCs refer to the food system approach, but these mostly remain focused on the stage of food production and on the latter stages where large emissions from food loss and waste and diet and consumption occur. Climate is becoming a serious agenda. I can take my country, almost the planting time is already changed. Yeah. We are not planting now long maturing crops, no way. It's already shifted. The research is already shifted to short maturing crops and unproductive crops, basically. Therefore, to combat climate change and to adapt and mitigate without environmental sustainability and inclusiveness, basically. Inclusiveness is no way. Therefore, what? Empowerment of the rural area. So in order to the environmental, so you have to empower the rural areas. Infrastructure, electricity, hydropower, what have you. Those are very important elements, basically. Very good. The second very important element is technology. Technology is important to, to, to combat and to adapt climate change also. Adaptation to climate change, particularly for small-scale producers that comprise the majority of farmers around the world, will be necessary to efforts to eradicate poverty and hunger. Without adaptation, researchers now estimate that climate change could depress growth in global crop yields by 5 to 30% by 2050. The 500 million small farms around the world will be most affected. Moreover, farmers and other rural people constitute a significant portion of the 100 million people within developing countries that climate change could push below the poverty line by 2030. Already there are fears this may be happening faster than expected. East African nations have been battling with swarms of desert locusts since the beginning of 2020. During quiet periods, known as recessions, desert locusts are usually restricted to the semi-arid and arid deserts of Africa. However, the last five years have been hotter than any other since the Industrial Revolution and since 2009. In Takana County, people's livestock are competing for pasture with billions of hungry hoppers. As a result, goats are not producing enough milk to feed their families. Anna Amurai, a pastoralist, says she used to get eight jugs of goat milk, but now only gets one from her goats. We now collect the milk for several days, then we add water so that we can make enough tea for the children. Pastoralists are worried that there won't be enough pasture for their livestock as the dry season is approaching. Moses Areng is a pastor and member of Logon Livestock Association. I don't know why the desert locusts came. Only God knows. If they could talk, they would tell us that they are in Turkana because they were born here, with nowhere to go, meaning they will continue to live and breed here. Food experts have said at this challenging time, there is a need not to forget how important the world's 500 million small-scale farms are for building global peace and food security. The Food System Summit, they say, will be an opportunity to lay the foundations for the sustainable food systems of the future as the peace and prosperity of future generations depend on it. COVID-19 has brought to the fore the connection between food, health and quality of life, but also how many of our food systems are failing us, especially where inequality is most prevalent. The urgency created by COVID-19 has created how quickly the global community can respond and adapt to existential threats. And we have been told it is this energy that must be channeled into transforming food systems to be more inclusive, more equitable, and more sustainable. That's our show for the week. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.